Okay, I created a little picture here to help illustrate what we're going to do in this tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to do FTPS, okay, File Transfer Protocol, uh, securely, and we're going to use a fi FileZilla FTP client, and we're going to use IIS 7 FTP server on Windows Server 2008 R2. And I've um, drawn up this diagram to show how this is going to work. We have a Windows server over here and I've drawn on this little firewall on the side of the server to illustrate the fact that the server, okay, the Windows server has a firewall which we're going to have to deal with in this tutorial. Okay, I've put the IP address where he's located. Notice that the server's on the 192.168.41.190 network it's hosting two websites and two FTP sites mountzion.com and dan.mountzion.com okay so two separate sites that it's hosting and we're gonna want an FTP to both of those now in previous videos I configured uh, FTP and we were able to successfully FTP to those sites we we're also able to successfully uh, get the websites for those sites so those FTP accounts are the same directories as the websites that are being hosted by these two domains. Alright, then for this server it has a in between the server and the client in this video. The client is at this IP address on a different network and in between the two is a firewall router. Okay, and so uh, and I put the IP addresses there. So in the last video what we were able to do is, in the last series of videos that is, we were able to connect with FTP to multiple domain sites, right? So we got that crossed off now. Now what we're going to do in this video is we're going to connect with FTPS using secure socket layer and transport layer security. Now in order to do that, um, I've just off the top of my head think what are we going to need to do? Well we're going to need to enable SSL on the server, on the IIS FTP server. We're going to need to make sure that we have a certificate or at least a self-signed certificate on the IIS FTP server we're going to need to open up the necessary firewall ports on both the server and the router to allow FTPS to go through. Now so far the ports that we've allowed through is just so far port 21 because in the previous videos we connected with FTP right and the router doesn't just have port 21 open it also has port 80 for websites and it has a mail port open because it's a mail server and all that but in the last series of videos we just opened up port 21 for FTP okay so we're gonna need to open up some more po ports on both the router and the server on both of the firewalls and then last but not least we're going to need to configure the FTP client FileZilla for the client to work with FTPS over um, secure socket layer transport layer security and I'm um, gonna show how to do that and hopefully we'll be able to um, connect to our site and FTP files from our client to our server but using FTPS and that will al allow us to log in with the username and password uh, encrypted and if we want we can even send the data over to the server uh, encrypted all right now I'm in my client on the um, my laptop client on the 4 network right and I'm switching over there and I've got FileZilla open I just want to demonstrate that FTP is working right now so I'm gonna click here and open up these the site manager and I've created a site for um, MountZion.com and Dan.MountZion.com right and let me put that in there okay so if I click on MountZion.com here and you could do this by clicking new site you'll see I've put in the host MountZion.com the FTP file transfer protocol which will go over port 21 automatically login type normal I put the username web admin and my password and if I hit connect you can see that it's successful we get a directory listing right here and we're able to um, FTP over to our site so that's successful right so I'll just cancel that and clear that so I just wanted to do that to prove that FTP is working now let's get FTPS working and for that what I'm gonna do is I've got my server here I've got a remote desktop connection to the server so here's the server and we're gonna start with the default website notice I've got the server manager open here um, this is a Windows 2008 
R2 server and um, I've got the server manager open and I've highlighted internet information services under roles and now I've highlighted I'm going to highlight the default website we'll start with the default website that's the one we just FTP'd to alright and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to FTP and I'll click on FTP SSL settings and I'm going to change it from um, allow SSL connections to custom and then I'll click advanced and I'm going to say require on the control channel um, SSL uh, encryption right so I'll require SSL encryption on the control channel that'll be for my username and password but then on the data channel once the data is flowing I'll allow that to go over unencrypted so I'll click OK right now if I wanted both I could have just easily clicked require SSL connections alright and if I want stronger encryption I could use 128 bit encryption for SSL connections right here that's going to slow down your transactions if you're doing your data with it so just bear in mind that okay uh, so I'll apply that okay I've gone back to my client and I'm gonna go here and you're gonna see that now when we try to connect we'll try to connect again we cannot connect to the server and we get a message that says 534 policy requires SSL right so we no longer can connect with our regular um, configuration in our FTP client because SSL is now required by the server so what we're gonna do is we'll open up our we'll, we'll stop this and we'll open up the manager here the site manager and we're gonna change this now from FTP file transfer protocol to FTPS and we're gonna use explicit TLS SSL okay and we've got that set up and everything else can stay the same and we'll click connect alright and you can see here that we got a message unknown certificate everything's okay there's our certificate that we have to accept now this is a self-signed certificate that we used on the server so we'll click OK and so the connections happened right and we're left here and it says opening binary mode data connection so it saw our server certificate but connection timed out failed to retrieve directory listing but we didn't pull up our directory so the SSL was working and we were able to contact the server but we were not able to open up the folder with our files so that's interesting so it's going to take some more configuring and that's where the firewall is going to come in I also want to point out that under here when we said custom when we set up our SSL settings here uh, we have my certificate chosen here now we have some other certificates that are belong um, these are also all self-signed certificates that were created in previous um, tutorials or they're built in or whatever but we created this one in a previous exercise my certificate now let's talk about that if we go to let's say and click on our server here and we scroll down the area to install a certificate or to create a self-signed certificate is under the IIS settings you have to have your server selected here notice where I what I have selected and I go down to IIS and there's an area called server certificates and if you double click that you can see this is certificates that you have installed on your web server on your IIS server and if you want you can create a self-signed certificate you can also create a certificate request here and this certificate request will you will um, give to your registrar or your uh, your certificate authority if you wanted to purchase a certificate let's say from VeriSign or one of the certificate vendors that um, certify websites and certify domains and um, and you can get it from let's say you know nine dollars a year up to hundreds of dollars a year depending on the certificate authority that you try to buy your certificate from okay so what we did was we created a self-signed certificate and it was pretty easy just clicked it and hit next and finished and that was that so 